Welcome to the July 2020 edition of Esoteric News Briefs. I'm your host, Jason. Let's get started. This time we have our first top 10 on Esoteric News Briefs. 10 states with the most UFO sightings. Compiled for us by Kristen Cook on SatelliteInternet.com. Now, Kristen has crunched the numbers using information gathered from the National UFO Reporting Center and compared it to state population. She then tabulated the number of UFO reports per every 100,000 citizens for the entirety of 2019 and the first six months of 2020. Going in reverse order, we begin with number 10, the Constitution State, Connecticut. With 176 total reported sightings, it looks like those wacky nutmeggers are seeing some strange things in the skies. Ranking in at number 9, a state better known for its hairy hominids, Washington. Almost doubling Connecticut's reported sightings, Washington State boasts slightly over 5 UFO reports for every 100,000 citizens. The next state draws in people from around the world, so it's no surprise that it's gained intergalactic attention. Number 8, Hawaii. With a small population and a small service area, your chances of seeing a UFO while vacationing is pretty high. Number 7 draws us closer to areas we think of as UFO hotspots, the American West. This one is slightly further north, though. We're looking at Wyoming. While it's considerably larger than our previous entry, Wyoming's minimal population makes it surprising that it is so high on the list. It boasts only 35 sightings, but that also means 6 out of every 100,000 people have seen a UFO in the past year and a half alone. Aliens may just have a sweet tooth, as demonstrated by our number 5 ranked state, Vermont. The maple syrup state has roughly the same number of sightings as Wyoming, but it is condensed into a much, much smaller area. That density of reports helps it creep into the number 6 spot. It should be no surprise that this next state is in the top 10, but many people are likely to expect it to rank higher. Coming in at number 5, the Land of Enchantment, New Mexico. Most famous for the Roswell incident in 1947, New Mexico has not shown any signs of slowing down in its UFO encounters. In just an 18-month period, it has reported 130 sightings. When somebody thinks of E.T. hotspots, chances are nobody would think of the state largely bordered by Canada, Maine. Why are aliens lurking in the skies of the Pine Tree State? Honestly, who knows? Maybe the low population means that they're less likely to be seen when abducting humans. Either way, the number of sightings per capita has ranked them in at number 4 on our list. Then again, maybe Maine is just en route to our next location, New Hampshire. Bordering our number 4 entry, New Hampshire has roughly the same number of sightings. Maybe there is a bit more going on in the Northeast than most of us know about. Holding the number 2 slot is another Canadian border state, Montana. Big Sky Country shares roughly the same latitude as Maine and New Hampshire. It could be the lack of light pollution that makes it easier to see the night sky, or maybe they all just fall along some extraterrestrial scenic route around our planet. And finally, our number one slot is physically located between number two, number seven, and number nine, boasting roughly nine sightings for every 100,000 people. Idaho is the state in the Union where you are most likely to see unidentified flying objects. In case you're wondering about the other states that border Idaho that didn't rank in the top 10, you have Oregon at number 11, Utah at number 16, and Nevada at 18. In the book, The 37th Parallel, Ben Mesrick recounts the large number of UFO sightings following this latitude. Since its publication, it seems like this UFO highway has shifted just a bit farther to the north. So if you want to encounter some strange aerial phenomena, it seems your best bet, in the U.S. at least, is to head to the northwest. Continuing our theme of UFOs, we now have 
NASA's Earthling Message to Aliens. Please, don't contaminate our planet. Brought to us by Hannah Sparks of the New York Post. The first line of this article sums it up best. Aliens, take note. Only humans can trash this planet. It seems early in July of 2020, NASA's Office of Planetary Protection, which, by the way, did you even know that division existed? Partnered with a new research organization. Or at least, new to them. SETI, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. Founded in 1984, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence has been searching the skies for signs of life. With increased exploration of Mars and our own moon, both organizations believe it is time to more seriously look at the potential for alien contamination and taking the necessary steps to prevent us from contaminating them. In response, SETI Institute released the following statement. We are proud to be NASA's partner for this mission-critical function, protecting Earth from backwards contamination and helping ensure that life we may find on other worlds didn't come from our own. Speaking of SETI, comes our next article, from National Geographic by author Nadia Drake. My dad launched the quest to find alien intelligence, and it changed astronomy. So this article tugs at my heartstrings since it comes from my home state of West Virginia, and it involves a location that I have personally visited before, the National Radio Astronomical Observatory in Greenbank. In 1960, 29-year-old Frank Drake began using the Greenbank Observatory to search the skies for signs of alien broadcasts. How was his search received? Well, it was considered bad science in those days, says Drake, now 90 years old. According to him, at the time, it was still considered in the realm of science fiction. His hypothesis relied on the idea that Earth unintentionally sends out our own signals, in the form of various radio and television broadcasts, so it is possible that alien life forms would do the same. This kickstarted SETI, which, as we heard in our previous article, is now working alongside NASA. While Drake's project didn't initially yield any results, it did drive forward an entire field of study in astronomy. In 1961, the National Academy of Sciences asked Drake to host a meeting at the Green Bank Observatory. During his preparations, he formulated the now-famous Drake Equation, which is used to estimate the number of civilizations that may exist in the Milky Way. While private research groups generally scoffed at the idea of funding the search for aliens, enthusiastic support for the concept came from an unlikely source, Russia. As a communist state, all scientific pursuits were considered to have equal merit, so acquiring funding was much easier for the former USSR. In the midst of the Cold War and the space race, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence seemed to be the uniting factor between our two countries. Eventually, SETI became funded by NASA, then defunded, and refunded, over and over and over again. Eventually, the program was seen as a waste of taxpayer dollars and cut entirely. SETI remains active as various non-profit groups, the most active being the SETI Institute in the University of Berkeley, California. While SETI is still looking for interstellar radio signals, astronomers have largely turned their attention towards technosignatures, or signs of alien technology. Their main focus is on the infrared spectrum, and they are looking for all astronomical phenomena, including supernova and black holes. In 60 years' time, we went from having one or two people doing something about detecting extraterrestrial life to hundreds including some of the brightest minds on the planet. And that fact has Drake very, very happy. Unfortunately, this next article brings us some tragic news. Written by Ed Whelan of AncientOrigins.net Famous Sacred Historic Oak Destroyed by Fire in the UK 
Venerated by modern pagans and druids alike, the white-leaved oak in Herefordshire, England, was destroyed by fire in early July. Over 500 years old, the oak sat at the corner boundary of Herefordshire, Gloucestershire, and Worcestershire, and was named in 1584 for its tendency to produce leaves with white pigmentation. Frequently adorned with decorations during the solstice, the white-leaved oak was a location of spiritual importance for people around the world. Known as the King of the Forest, this tree was famous for being struck by lightning multiple times throughout its life, only to flourish as a result. At this time, it is not known what started the blaze. Our final article is quite a doozy. It's brought to us by the City Press in South Africa. It is entitled, Transnet Bodyguard Fired for Witchcraft Reinstated. Written by Satumo Stone. It all begins with the bodyguard of former CEO Sayabonga Gama. The bodyguard was fired in December of 2017 after accusations of witchcraft. Vusi Makele, the bodyguard, had been approached by four individuals who began to ask about his employer, Gama, his health, and well-being. Eventually, one of those four asked him to sprinkle some muti across the gate to Gama's residence. Now, if you're like me, my first question is, what in the world is Muti? Muti is an African magic powder containing herbs and minerals. But, in its use for witchcraft, it can sometimes contain human remains. Now, Michele played along with the request. He acquired the Muti and later tossed it from his car window on the interstate. That said, by this time, Michele was already having trouble with his client. Gama had started a new relationship. This individual was attempting to use Michele as a personal servant and chauffeur. Prior to his dismissal, Michele had tried to resign. Twice. Each time, his resignation was refused. The company response to his second resignation attempt was to deny it because they felt he was attempting to avoid disciplinary action. After the Muti incident, Michele was scheduled for a disciplinary hearing, but he never showed up. As a result, he was dismissed after the fact. It turns out the reason for his disciplinary hearing was that Gama, his employer, wanted him charged with witchcraft. An unnamed source close to Gama says that Michele was caught on security camera sprinkling the Muti across the doorframe. It's not known whether the actual footage to this was ever recovered, so ultimately, it's all hearsay. According to company documentation, Michele's charges were for 1. Failure to raise alarm at a life-threatening situation. 2. Active participation in conduct placing an employer and his family in danger, and three, actively participating in witchcraft. At this time, all charges have been dropped, and Michele has been reinstated with full back pay from the time of his dismissal in 2017. Sayabonga Gama has since been removed from his position, and all managers involved with Michele's dismissal are now under investigation. Michele is now accusing Gama of abuse of power, money laundering, bribing police, irregular appointments, and illegal tapping of employee cell phones. When it's all said and done, I don't know if the Muti was ever sprinkled on the property. But I've got to say, it's probably not wise to upset the one who's in charge of your safety and security. That brings us to the conclusion of this month's Esoteric News Briefs. As always, until next time, remember, stay weird.